Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar, the weather warnings, the UK Met Office run and then we'll go for the GFS, GM, Eastern BF and GFS ensembles as it does look like we could be going much colder for March. We can actually be seeing some proper wintry weather. Some of the models are starting to show a bit of blocking into March, perhaps maybe northerly or easterly winds. So we'll have a look at that, uh, look at that in detail uh, in the second half of the video. But the start, we'll have a look at the rain spreading through northern areas and the snow behind it, which could actually turn to thunder snow for some. So we do have a snow and lightning warning, a joint warning out across Scotland. So we'll have a look at that in detail as well. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we start by having a look at the live radar. You can see most areas in the south and east are pretty dry. Now there are some patchy showers around across Wales, sort of the northwest of England, down into the south. Again, just with a bit of thicker clouds, some drizzle and some lighter rain, but nothing too crazy. Spread head, uh, head northwards and westwards, then we get into the heavy rain. A squally band of rain, and you can see some bright colours along that. That's very heavy rain pushing through. Squally winds as well with that as well. Um, and then we see turning to snow over higher ground as cold air digs in behind. And you can see all the way out to the northwest, um, out across northern isles of Scotland, some real heavy, hefty showers moving in, turning to snow. Uh, and you can see also bright colours mixed in with that, showing it is heavy, squally showers. And that's where we could be seeing some thunder snow as those come on shore over the course of this evening. But yeah, this weather front will slowly progress southeastwards with really quite cold polar air behind it, um, which is going to mean tomorrow many areas could see some snow or some wintriness it all depends where the showers are within any moderate to heavy shower it will be falling as wintry in many areas so we'll have to look uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute as well but this is progressing slowly southwards and eastwards quite miserable conditions across the north and the west and those will transfer further south and eastwards over the next 12 hours or so so we do now have a look at the weather warnings. We still have two warnings that we had a look at yesterday. Snow and lightning warning and a wind warning. Now the snow and lightning warning is for many parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland, mainly Western areas. And then of course we have a wind warning. Um, and it has been updated from 6 a.m. today until 6 p.m. today. So it should expire very, uh, well, in a few hours time after this video is uploaded. Um, and yeah. It's not going to be too severe with that, but if we have to look at the further uses once again, perhaps 40 to 50 or maybe 60 miles per hour could cause a bit of disruption, but I'm not expecting anything too crazy from it. But the snow and lightning warning is the one we need to keep an eye on. Um, frequent heavy snow showers are expected, along with very gusty winds, and the chance of frequent lightning in some uh, areas. Uh, and you can see temperatures across Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland going to drop. Follow the squally band of rain, which we saw the radars moving south and eastwards. One to three centimetres in a few areas, three to seven over uh, even low lying areas where the showers line up. And maybe 10 to 20 centimetres on some higher ground. 45 to 55 or maybe even 65 miles per hour blizzard conditions. And of course, those showers are, are going to be heavy coming off uh, coming off uh, the North Atlantic with a very cold air mass. That instability, it could cause them to come thunderstorms um, with some lightning accompanied by frequent lightning perhaps which could impact power supplies including some places outside of the warning area snow showers are increasingly likely to turn back to rain and sleet at low levels later thursday morning and early afternoon and you can see this does expire 8 p.m tomorrow so the risk is all the way into into the evening tomorrow but for low-lying areas it should start to decrease throughout tomorrow High impact, low likelihood, because of course it is convection based, so it's difficult to say exactly where it does uh, sort of come off. Um, but we'll have to keep an eye on that over the next sort of six to 12 hours as those big showers, those thundery snow showers, start packing into the north and the west. Now, if we do have a look at the UK Metro, we'll have a look at precipitation and temperature. Now, you can see that squally band of rain moving south and eastwards and turning to snow behind it. You see frequent heavy snow showers overnight tonight into parts of Scotland. Northern England, Northern Ireland, and Republic of Ireland as well. And even coming inland to some areas through tomorrow morning in Northern England and perhaps parts of Wales as well. Widely, apart from the far south and east, could be seeing 
wintry showers, some snow for or falling snow for many, and those will progress inland. You can see even some going to southern England through sort of mid to late morning around lunchtime. Even into the London area could be seeing some heavier snow there. Packing in, you can see the potential for thunder snow with those really dark um, sort of pinky purples up towards Scotland. Now, as we head through Thursday, we should start to see that intensity drop off in the evening for Friday morning. Bit brief ridge of high pressure, bit uh, a bit of a milder air mass pushing in. If we see another weather front push in, and you see repeated weather fronts pushing as we stay very unsettled um, to end February. But as I said, as we go into March, could be turning more high pressure dominated and maybe much colder, as we'll see in a minute. Now, if you look at max temperatures, it is very much up and down. You see earlier this morning, not too cold, maybe a few areas in the far south, southeast with clearer skies getting colder. Throughout today, you can see that temperature drop across the north, freezing over northern Scotland, uh, parts of North England, 9, 10 degrees as that squally line moves uh, move through. Overnight tonight, you can see most areas in the north and west dropping to around freezing or below freezing in the far southeast, 7 or 8 degrees as we're still in a milder air mass. And beyond that, Thursday is going to be quite a chilly day, max temperature 6 or 7 degrees in the far southeast. Further northwards and westwards, around uh, 3 or 4 max, maybe even much colder in a few space uh, places. Beyond that, through Thursday evening, temperatures drop quite widely. To around freezing, but we see cloud and milder air push in for Friday morning. So it's still very cold in the north, but in the south may hover above freezing uh, uh, for mm. sunrise on Friday. Through Friday afternoon, 7, 8, 9, 10 degrees in the south. Still very cold in the north. We see another very cold night through uh, Friday night into Saturday, around freezing for many parts of England and Wales. But we do start to see a bit, bit of a milder air push in, maybe 8 or 9 degrees through Saturday. And then another cold night through Sunday, for it does look like we're going to be seeing more of a southwesterly wind coming. You see those 10, 11 degrees to our far southwest. So up and down temperatures, nothing massively mild and nothing massively cold either. Just sort of around average, really, this time of year. Some frost around, some much colder nights, but also some milder days with temperatures getting up to around 10 degrees for some. So nothing too crazy. So we now have a look at the longer term outlook, have a look at the GFS run. Now if you do look at this chart, you'd think there's no real chance of anything uh, particularly cold uh, in the near future. And you'd be right for the next perhaps week. But it's beyond that where the interest does start to increase. So you can see those big blues and purples to our north, that is the low pressure, which is giving us uh, a lot of unsettled conditions. So you can see the much colder air mass coming in from the northwest. Uh, if you do have a look at that, um, as uh, as you can see right now, much colder air mass getting below minus five, down to plus one, minus six, minus seven, minus eight degrees, eight and drift THP are quite widely. So wintry for all within showers. Beyond that, though, you can see high pressure start to try and build over the top and to our east. And that's a consistent signal we've seen over the last couple of days. But it's beyond that. As we're towards day 10, you see high pressure actually does touch a ridge to our north. And we do start to pull in a bit of a north to northeasterly wind beyond day 10. And it actually goes really quite cold, real hard easterly wind with bitterly cold air heading in from the north and east. And it's pretty blocked. And we stay in this easterly wind for a good sort of five days or so. Now, if you do look at the upper air temperatures, now we are heading into March, so the, uh, the air to our north is starting to increase in temperature, but it still is very cold. And you can see we are pulling in the minus five line um, for quite a long period of time, and then potentially even getting close to the minus ten line at 384 hours. Uh, now, because it's getting into March, it's not going to be uh, like freezer days, like we would have seen if this was in January, for example. But it will still give temperatures probably low single digits in the day, and um, below freezing, very cold overnight. And it would mean there would be plenty of wintry showers around. Now, this is not an exceptional chart by any means, but it's kind of exceptional for what we've had so far this winter. So it is, yeah, looking like potentially really quite cold on the GFS run. Um, and if we do have a look at the temperature deviation, just to give, uh, to just show, you can see really quite cold with a pretty bitterly cold easterly flow there. And you can see big cold sectors for uh, the UK and North uh, West Europe. So yeah, looking very interesting there in the longer term. Now, if we have a look at the GM, see if that does back it up. Now, it only goes out to day 10, so we wouldn't expect to see uh, as much cold, um, but we'd still expect to see that high pressure build. And as we head out towards of seven days, out to day 10, you do see a bit of a pressure build to our north and our northeast, but it's not pulling off anything remotely cold. 
not that much colder, uh, even to our north or our east. So not showing anything basically cold at this stage, but showing what the GFS was showing around day 7. So maybe a couple of days delayed, or may not come off at all. Um, it's not too unusual to see easterly winds in March, of course, as the stratospheric winds start to sort of uh, lose their intensity, lose their grip on the atmosphere, and we do start to see more northerly or easterly uh, um, sort of air flows. Um, and easterly is pretty much pretty common in March, really. So we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. GM does show that high pressure building in, but not going particularly cold with that. But the GFS does go into a full blown north to northeasterly wind, which would be uh, really quite cold, and it actually does show a real cold easterly at one point, which would bring in frequent snow showers to the south and the east, which have seen very little so far this winter, if anything, really. Now, if you have a look at the ECMWF, now the one reason why there is uh, a bit of confidence perhaps with this north or easterly flow is because the ECMWF goes for it as well. Now, if you run through all the way to day seven, you can start to see that pressure build to our north. Beyond that to day 10, we do start to put in an easterly wind. Now, if we have a look at the Angel of THPA temperatures, you can see it is not bitterly cold, getting down to minus five at Angel of THPA, even not a little bit colder than that at certain times uh, in certain regions. Um, but it was to be cold enough to give widespread three, four, five degree to daytime highs, really cold with an easterly wind, feeling around freezing and overnight lows of uh, below freezing widely, uh, hard frosts and wintry showers. Uh, anything falling out of the sky with this sort of air mass would be of a wintry nature. So, yeah, could be turning very, very cold on the, in the longer term, around day 10 and beyond. Um, both the GFS and ECMDF are on board with it. The GM run um, still has that pressure build, but not quite getting into an easterly wind. So we'll have to see exactly how it does play out, of course. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, now you can see there isn't massive support for a cold air mass, but there's much more support than there was even yesterday or the day before. So perhaps we're seeing a bit of a transition. Now, you can see right now we do have temperatures around average um, this time of year, but we see a big drop off over the course of the next 12 hours as that cold front does spread through that squally band of rain. Only last maybe 24 hours in the south, but we do go in an upwards trend. And for the last couple of days of February, we're well above average, very, very mild indeed. But as we head into March, there becomes the big uncertainty. We have a lot of spread, some including the operational GFS run going bitterly cold, that's the minus five line or below, others going much milder. And uh, there was a trend around 3rd, 4th March to go really quite mild. Still is quite a few on some members going for that, but there's more now going for a much uh, colder scenario. Not a majority by any means, but many more than we saw yesterday. And you see in the longer term, it actually does dip below average for the first week or two of March. So... Perhaps there is a signal for colder weather, but at this stage it is just uh, some hints uh, and a potential. Um, nothing concrete by any means. We've known so far this winter that many of these sort of day 10 to day 14 charts haven't come off. But I do have more confidence probably in March as those stratospheric winds start to reduce it. More than likely we will see a colder sort of spell over the next few weeks uh, and maybe this uh, this is the first signs of it as those stratospheric winds uh, reduce jet stream gets a bit more amplified and we see blocking patterns uh, have a little bit more control than they've had recently precipitation signal was also down in the longer term so perhaps that is another signal of higher pressure building again perhaps forming a block and if we look at the dew points we've seen much colder in the longer term as well perhaps indicating once again um, we could be seeing temperatures in around freezing with much colder air masses potentially um, and sea level pressure of course in the longer term actually rising a little bit perhaps yet yeah, indicating once again we could be seeing um, some more uh, drier weather new snow depth nothing too crazy but again wouldn't expect that because a lot of any snow potential over the next couple of weeks would be uh, convection based and humidity temperatures generally around average really um, but a lot of scatter of course in the longer term so we'll have to see how it does play out. For the moment, some wintry conditions quite widely over the next 24 hours or so, especially for the north and westwards with thunder snow perhaps. And then beyond that, as we head into uh, the end of February, turns mild for the start of March, we have the potential for seeing actual winter perhaps arriving um, in from the north or the east. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.